I just want to come in and have a visit with you. Let us forget all that has pressed itself in upon us to make us sometimes feel that God the good is not all in all. Here in the silence we shall know the presence of God and see clearly just how we are to go about living the life that he is giving us, so we may bring forth the order, beauty, and freedom that he has planned and that are now awaiting our understanding use. But let us not go too far into the metaphysics of this wonderful thing. Instead, we are here together just to rest quietly and happily in reality. As we do this, a real transformation will be worked in us and for us. We shall reap the good fruits of our study, affirmation, and meditation. We know from our experience in unity that there is almost a universal lack of understanding of the truth of being. When we use the word truth, we mean that which is true of God and true of God's children. This spiritual truth is that you are God's own beloved child and that God is ever giving you his own wisdom, love, power, life, and substance. In the past, we have been led to believe that we are the children of physical parents and that we must get our impressions and education, form our living habits, and even do our work in the way that they direct. Because of this, we have failed to wake up and find out that we are really God's children and that we have inherited from Him a perfect mind which is capable of unfolding the wonderful Christ qualities as Jesus Christ unfolded his God-given mind. As we become aware of the truth that we are God's children and that God is the very intelligence within us, we discover that health also is our inheritance from the Father. We learn, too, that there is divine law in life with established rules that make for health happiness and prosperity if we live by them. As we learn that we are God's children living here to find out his plan for us, we become more and more interested in studying spiritual things for ourselves. We are no longer willing to accept the opinions of others, nor to live as they live especially if their ways bring sickness and sorrow. We begin to feel, rightly, that there must be a way of living that will keep us well and happy. The real purpose of your life is to express the creation of God, to unfold the many departments of your mind which God has planned for you and which will enable you to know and to do his will. When you know that there is nothing for you to worry about or to fear, you may then relax and feel happy. The soul must be awakened, brought to a realization of truth, and encouraged in the righteous use of all the God-given faculties and powers. The individual must be helped to unify his spirit, soul, and body in harmonious spiritual living, here and now. God, my Father and your Father, has made me to know that no matter what I have done or what others have done to me, he has implanted within me the pattern of perfection. He has given me the life power, intelligence, and substance out of which I may recreate my soul qualities and my physical structures and so come forth a new creature. You too, by studying and proving this truth, can do the same. 
Now, because of God's great understanding love, which Jesus Christ has helped us to comprehend and realize, we are beginning to catch glimpses of what the Father is and what he has for us and what we are in truth. We are beginning to learn that life is our gift from the Father, a gift that is never withdrawn, never lessened, never limited by the giver. We are beginning to enjoy this gift and to yearn to know how to make right use of it so that we may have the fullness of joy and blessings in it. We are starting to discover that we can actually do the splendid things we were created to do and came into the world to do. This realization should send a glow of warmth and happiness and a quickening of life all through our being. Truly it is of great value for us to set to work to perfect anything and everything that we may find that does not measure up to the best that our new light shows us. We shall discover that it is much more important to change and to do that which is really best for our progress and our health than it is to be smugly consistent or to make the excuse that we have always done thus and so it is too late to change now. The moment we discover anything undesirable in our minds or our lives, we should seek to make the changes necessary to bring about that which is desirable. Don't be concerned if you don't always get from your study and your prayers the results that your senses take cognizance of. Your spiritual awakening is the important thing. It will increase your consciousness of your unity with God mind and will give you greater freedom of expression through the various centers of consciousness in your body. Your spiritual study will call these disciples or centers of yours into finer embodiment so that they will be alert and responsive. It will be up to you to give them the true ideas and set them to work, proving the truth, each in the thing it is called to do. Life is a school. The great schoolmaster knows just what problems we need to keep us alert and to bring out the wonderful qualities that the Father has measured out for us to come up to. That is our purpose in life, to succeed in bringing forth God's perfect idea, the perfect man. In the beginning, God created man in his own image and likeness, even as he created the little seed to bring forth of its kind. As lives the flower in the seed, so lives the Christ in me. The germ of God-likeness slumbers in us, and it should be our true aim in being to make manifest this perfect self or Christ of God in our lives. All of us sooner or later come to the place in our development where we are no longer satisfied to go on living the old life without the knowledge of our oneness with God, the source of our being. Sometimes, when we reach this point in our soul's progress, we do not at first know just what is taking place. We may become restless and dissatisfied. We may go through experiences which we do not understand. We may even be tempted to think that our good has gone from us. But just as surely as there is God, the one presence and one power, we shall find that all is well and that we are but going from one room, as it were, into another larger and lighter room. 
as we leave old circumstances, beliefs, habits, and desires behind, and seek to understand and to enter into and get the blessings out of the larger life which is ever opening to us, we are filled with a sense of peace, freedom, and assurance that all is well. We should then turn our attention within and devote ourselves to those thoughts and acts which make for poise, order, health, and success. As we realize that we are God's children, that we have power and authority to think and to speak the good and true, and to have it manifest in harmonious relations and pleasant surroundings, we no longer invite or submit to inharmony, misunderstandings, or limitations. We place ourselves in God's keeping and think truth, and it directs us in ways of peace and pleasantness. As we think of others as God's children, we see them in a new light. We understand how it is that they are trying to unfold and use the faculties and powers God has implanted in them, and we have compassion if they seem to fall short at times. We also have power to speak truth for them, to bless them, and to help them. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5, 6 All of us are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. All of us are learning how to receive that which feeds and satisfies us. So you may rejoice this moment that the Holy Spirit is blessing you with the very things you need and will continue to show you more and more of truth until you put on the full Christ consciousness. Don't bother about what has been or what seems to be taking place at present, or what is to come in the future. Leave past, present, and future in God's hands. Leave yourself in God's care and keeping, and just do that which will furnish spirit with the necessary cooperation and the necessary materials to be converted into harmony, strength, and health of body. Sometimes things happen in the realm of the senses or in connection with the physical body which cause one to depreciate the body or even to wish almost that one did not have it. In such an event, the soul may reach out so much that the body is neglected until it suffers. Suffering is one of the means of drawing the attention of the soul back to its beautiful temple. The Christ mind can and will direct the soul in taking up its wonderful work in the body that it may continue to have this very necessary vehicle of expression. The light of the Christ mind enables one to see all things in right relation so that peace can prevail. We have learned that the very presence, life, and intelligence of God are ever abiding in man's being. The Spirit of God is what gives you intelligence and life. Spirit has developed for you the mental life which we call the soul. The soul has built the body and ever continues to renew and rebuild it day by day. Spirit has no age. It is eternal, as God is eternal and unchanging. The soul is not old in the sense of being full of years and decrepitude. The soul is ever unfolding God's ideas, and these are unchangeable. The development of soul qualities 
causes the individual to be more and more mature in his judgments and expressions. The soul ever keeps in touch with that which is true of God and the Son of God, and is ever refreshed and eager for life's experiences. The body, which is formed by the action of thoughts of life, love, substance, power, and intelligence in everyone, is never old. The very substance out of which the body is formed and which nourishes and sustains it is ever new and responsive to the thoughts of life which impress it. We know that the body is periodically renewed. We can renew and rebuild it and change its appearance by changing our thoughts and living habits. First of all, remember that God is omnipresent, as present as the very life in which you live, move, and have your being, the very substance out of which your body is formed and nourished, the very intelligence which is within you in every nerve, brain cell, and structure of the body. God is the very love which draws together and holds in perfect harmony, if you will only allow it, all the elements of your being. God is the very light which enables you to understand yourself, others, and all God's creation, so that you may always think truth, the true state of all creation. Pray for understanding. Claim your oneness with God. Study your relationship with Him so that you may know how to lay hold of the abundant life, intelligence, substance, and love so that you can build these into your soul and your body to perfect your expression. When you have come to the place where you are ready to cooperate with the source of all good, your indwelling Lord, you are bound to receive his help. From the beginning, all of the qualities and capabilities you need in order to make for yourself a perfect destiny have been implanted within you. Through your study, understanding, and practice of truth principles, you are finding how to awaken, develop, and set free into righteous expression all of these inner spiritual resources. Set aside regular periods every day for prayer, times that are most convenient for you. Use words of truth during your silence periods. As you change your thinking and bring it into line with truth principles, a transformation will take place in your consciousness. Your mind will become keen, awake, alert, illumined, and your body temple will be filled with new life. You will be inspired with new and practical ideas that will enable you to succeed in a larger way. We are studying spiritual science to get a broader conception of God rather than holding to the view that he is a personal being with parts like man, a being subject to change and capable of varying moods. Though personal to each one of us, God is it, neither male nor female, but principle. God is not a cold, senseless principle like that of mathematics, but the principle of life, love, and intelligence. God is all intelligence. There is but the one mind, and in reality there are no separate men and women. A full realization of this great truth would do away with all selfishness, the cause of all the misery of earth. 
We must understand clearly that the real life of all men is identical with our own, and that aside from the one life, all is illusion, that all seeming differences in people are caused by selfishness or desire for something separate and apart from God or our fellow men. The momentous question is, how can man come into harmony with principle? The answer is, by simply recognizing that in his real inner self, man is the expression of principle and that seeming sin, sickness, and death are not real. To some this recognition comes easily, while to others it is a matter of growth, but it will come to all who persistently seek. We must learn to declare our oneness with principle, regardless of appearances. Along with our declarations of oneness with principle, we should keep ourselves purified and deny the errors with which false belief has closed the phenomenal world. As we do the works spiritually, the results will surely follow. We are studying a spiritual science as exact in its requirements, as logical in its deductions, and as demonstrable in its workings as the science of mathematics. Exactness and pure reason are the absolute requirements of every successful student. As the fundamental rules of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division enter into and work out the abstruse problem of the advanced mathematician or the simple example of the beginner, so do the fundamental principles of spiritual science work unerringly in simple healing or in the solution of the great problems of life. Now, dear student, the three essentials of success in the study of mathematics are also the three essentials to success in the study of spiritual science. They are understanding of its fundamental principles, pure and unbiased reasoning, and the ability to prove that the principle is workable. Studying cause and principle throughout the world's history, we find records of the wise children of men who have turned from the absurdity of effect trying to deal with itself and sought for the great cause of all. In the study of it, they have found that the causing power is mind, and only through knowledge of this power shall man be able to deal successfully with those restless shadows called human life that appear upon the external canvas of eternity. 2,000 years ago, there came a manifestation of human life so conversant with the great causing power of life that he called that power Father, and it was said of him, the word became flesh. John 1.14 He was a fearless teacher of truth. He spent his ministry freeing mankind from delusions. With the sweeping proclamation, Call no man father on the earth, for one is your father, even he who is in heaven, Matthew 23.9 he emancipated the race from the limitation of mortal parentage. We are indebted to Jesus Christ and his fearless propagation of truth for our knowledge of this saving science. He demonstrated that sin, sickness, and death are false quantities and are no part of a correct statement of life. Jesus Christ taught distinctly that one is your Father, even he who is in heaven, and that the kingdom of God is within you. 
Jesus Christ made of every statement a living thing. What has been called his teaching is not his teaching if it will not heal the sick and feed the poor as he said it would. It has been this fact that has caused so much unbelief in the teachings of this age. The mistake some of our teachers make is that they believe in Christ intellectually and deal with his truth intellectually, whereas spiritual things must be spiritually judged. They have no conception of the esoteric meaning of Jesus Christ's words and consequently have no power to demonstrate them. There are many now who turn the key of knowledge and enter into the understanding of what Jesus Christ meant when he declared, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. They prove their understanding by doing the very works he did. One gentle-hearted little woman lately was the channel for healing a baby of as severe a type of leprosy as any recorded among the healings of Jesus. Another teacher of spiritual science was instrumental in causing a cataract to melt from a man's eye by one treatment. The film gradually slipped off. I have seen the lame rise up and walk and fever depart as recorded in the word of the gospel. These are the signs to follow. They indicate the true believer. The truths which were spoken in secret shall be proclaimed upon the housetops of high understanding. After this great spiritual wave sweeps over the earth, every remaining inhabitant shall know him whom to know aright is a life eternal, and whom to serve aright is joy everlasting. The visible universe is but the externalization of thoughts. Man, a spiritual word or thought, has existed from the beginning. Hence, in reality, man's higher self is spiritual. He is a life and intelligence expressed. He thinks and his thoughts become objective as forms. These forms are of many grades of density, or as the physical scientists would say, molecular vibration. The real man is not any of these forms. He is the force that causes the forms to exist, and when he knows this, every phase of phenomenal life comes under his dominion. Thus, spiritual science teaches that only limited results can be obtained by studying the body or any of its conditions. The body has its origin in the mind and can be successfully regulated only from that point. Nearly every day something that appears new but which in reality is old is brought before us. There are in our world today many things of which we knew nothing a few years ago. These things are not new. They have merely come into expression. The world and all that the world contains were created in the beginning. As you really understand God, you will learn to drop all thought and feeling of anything contrary to good. God is the one presence and the one power, the good omnipotent. The creation is God's, and all that God has made is good. We, his children, are made up of his ideas, the qualities of being. We must keep remembering that God is mind, 
and that man is ever unfolding in his own consciousness the faculties of the one mind. When this is known, the cities, the people, their habits, their attainments, their wars, all of which outpicture states of mind, will be changed. We are not to be too concerned with the appearances of inharmony, lack, and imperfection about us. These things are not real, and they will pass away quickly as truth takes hold in the consciousness. We are to remember that the light shines in the darkness, and that in the very midst of the darkness man's mind opens to the light, and for him there is no more darkness. Inspiration, enthusiasm, strength, joy, and outer supply come to you in ever-increasing measure as you depend upon the only source there is for your sufficiency. As you establish divine order in your thought world within, as you find your home in Christ, the truth, you are bound to find your right environment, the place that the Father has prepared for you, in which to serve him and develop your soul. The only place to find contentment and health is in the place or state of consciousness that Christ the truth has prepared for you. These inner riches do not depend upon outer conditions, and we must not bind ourselves by believing that they do. According to your faith, be it unto you. There really is no limit to spiritual unfoldment. The spirit of truth within your own soul is giving you a right understanding of every experience that comes to you, and you are calling some of your inactive, unused soul powers into expression to meet the need. You are developing your soul, and this is the important thing. The more you exercise your powers, the stronger they grow. So, you have the assurance and the satisfaction of knowing that your faith and all the rest of your spiritual faculties are being gradually developed until the Jesus Christ degree of unfoldment is reached. All new experiences that try your faith are just opportunities for you to make the good manifest. Best of all, these experiences are the stepping stones upon which you are progressing to more advanced things. They cause you to quicken, awaken, and bring forth into expression more of your innate capabilities that are awaiting your use. You, as an individual soul, took up your expression as a living being to embody in consciousness and experience that which we think of as God's image-likeness, man. In other words, you are a child of God, an offspring, an expression and combination of God ideas or qualities of being. Your own soul desired a vehicle of expression, and through the use of the creative law of life, you came in touch with those who helped you to build the physical body temple. Your own soul's choice drew you to those who were in tune with your soul's desires and expressions. Because you came into a new body, and because your soul was obliged to make adjustments to accommodate itself to the conditions and persons about it, you may sometimes be unable to hold steadfastly to the light which your soul should receive from God-mind and which it should use in its unfoldment. Every experience will prove encouraging to you when you begin to understand it, 
for it will show you that the mind is powerful and that the body and its functions respond readily and fully to the bidding of the mind. So you see, healing is always assured. The glorious truth of being transforms mind and body. Those who are transformed will arise and take up their beds and walk. They will begin to glorify God in doing the things that are well-pleasing in His sight. They will know that life is eternal and inexhaustible. Through the right use of God-given power, a person may make his life the very thing he most wants. God wants all of us to manifest his life, his radiant, glowing health, his joy, in fact, all that he is. The Creator is now breathing his purifying, vitalizing, cleansing breath of life into each cell and fiber of your body, filling you with strength that is a barrier to any and every appearance of negativeness. The power that created you is always at work to restore you and to maintain you in wholeness. Now that you are coming into the understanding of Christ's principles and learning how to cooperate with your indwelling Lord and Healer, you are made whole and well in every part. Pray for your innate and unlimited faith in God to be quickened and stirred into positive action. With your eye of faith, see yourself continuously manifesting purity, harmony, and wholeness in every part of your body. Think of your organism as being the pure life and substance of spirit made manifest. Keep your mind filled with joyous, constructive, beautiful, health-producing thoughts that maintain harmony in both mind and body. When your mind is peaceful, the healing energies flow through your whole being freely and abundantly. <laughs>